The PlayStation 5 Slim was just announced a couple weeks ago and I've been thinking about it a lot and the more I think about it, the less sense this makes, the less likely I am to buy it and I really don't think anybody should be buying one of these. It just doesn't make sense at all. Now, I'm not one to get in front of the camera and talk negatively about stuff. On this channel, I like to talk about stuff I love. I love a lot of things, and one of those things is Sony and PlayStation. I love Sony. Sony and Nintendo are my main things. I have always had a PlayStation. My first console was a PlayStation 1. The PS2 is probably my favorite console of all time, and I've had a PS3, PS4, and now I have a PS5. And I love Sony, and I usually don't have anything negative to say about them, but uh, I, I, I'm gonna rant a little bit here. My first issue with the PlayStation 5 Slim is the term slim. And seeing photo comparisons of the original PlayStation 5 and this PlayStation 5 Slim, uh, it, it, it doesn't look that much smaller. When I think slim, I think of the PlayStation 1 and then the PlayStation 1, uh, you know, O-N-E, that's, you know, tiny, it's like this big. And I think of the PlayStation 2 when we had the fat PS2, which was the original, and then the Slim, which was probably 70% smaller. It was tiny compared to that big fat beast of the PlayStation 2. But if you look at size comparisons, like what's on your screen right now, it doesn't look that much smaller. And that's kind of the main point of this console, from what I can tell. It, it's not more powerful. It's not a PlayStation 5 Pro. I know some people, including myself, were thinking that was gonna come maybe with a PlayStation 5 Slim, like you'd release a Slim and then you have a PS5 Pro, maybe 8K, you know, a little bit of a beefier console. But the main upgrade here is a little bit more storage. You go from 825, 800 and yeah, 825 gigs to a terabyte, you get 175 gigs of storage that's not really even usable once you set the console up and put one game on it. So the new PlayStation 5 Slim is $450 for the digital version, and the original PlayStation 5 was $400 for the digital version. And for the physical version, we're at $500 for both. So you have $500 for the original, $500 for this new Slim version. So they're increasing the price of entry, uh, $50. And I guess they're justifying that with 175 gigs of storage. If you need more storage, just go buy an SSD for a hundred bucks and upgrade your storage significantly. You can get like a terabyte of storage added on to a PlayStation 5 for around a hundred bucks if you find a deal. Just slap it in the M.2 and, and you have more storage. And you kind of need to do that. I mean, you have more than three games downloaded onto your system you're out of space. I mean, I had to delete so much just to play Spider-Man 2. So the price is one thing, and then the overall design of the PlayStation 5 Slim, I, it's okay, I guess. I mean, I don't really love the way the original PlayStation 5 looks. It looks like the back of a gaming chair or something like that, or a spaceship modem or router. Like, what is it supposed to look like? And I completely understand brand recognition. I completely understand the marketing. Someone's gonna see this and be like, oh, PlayStation 5. I've seen the PlayStation 5 a million times. This is just like a little bit different. It's the newer thing. But I was hoping they'd make something more traditional, like the Xbox Series X. Now, I'm not a fan of Xbox, but at least it's just like a rectangular prism. You could just put it somewhere however you want it. And that leads me to my next thing. You can't just take this new PlayStation 5 Slim out of the box and put it somewhere. Horizontally you can. Apparently it has a little kickstand for the physical model because it has that giant tumor of a disk drive on it. But for the digital model, they haven't told us what they're gonna, what they're gonna, how are we gonna put it somewhere? And if you do want to put it somewhere, it's $30. The stand, the vertical stand is $30. The original PlayStation 5 had that included already. It was in the box. I don't understand why we're, we're regressing here. Why are we going backwards? Just give us the thing again. Why, why, just make it a little plastic thing. Why does it have to be kind of a deluxe accessory just so you can put your PlayStation 5, the thing you just bought, in your living room and play it on your TV. And I understand the bottom of it's flat. You could probably just put it somewhere. And I have cats, so like I wouldn't trust them to not knock it over. And then I actually store mine horizontally all the time. Um, when I bought my PlayStation 5, I tried the horizontal stand. I didn't really like it. Actually, I made a video when I got my PS5 and everyone's like, why didn't you just use the freaking stand? You know, the stand it came with to put it horizontally. Cause I bought 3D printed stands to just 
put underneath it because I didn't really like the way the horizontal stand worked. It was kind of like wobbly. I, it wasn't great. So I bought aftermarket 3D printed little slides for the side that just hold the PlayStation 5 up. And I'm sure there's going to be tons of aftermarket stuff for this. I'm sure you're not going to have to spend the whole $30. I mean, I got these little 3D printed things for like 10 bucks. So I know there's going to be stuff there to make sure that this thing can, can go somewhere. But I just don't understand why Sony's making it so difficult there. And this removable disk drive thing is probably like my biggest concern here. It, it just makes the least sense to me. I don't understand why they would do this. In what scenario will someone buy the digital version and then upgrade later? I can't think of many reasonable situations where someone will buy the disk drive separately. And one great reason for that is the digital version's $450 the physical version is $500. So if you buy the digital version for $450 and you want to get the disk drive, the disk drive alone is $80. So it's $30 more to upgrade down the road. If you have the slightest idea that you will need a disk drive, why would you buy it later? Why wouldn't you just spend the extra $50? It's 50 bucks, that's like a tank of gas. Maybe if someone gifts you a physical game and you wanna play the game, you go out and buy the thing that's more expensive than the game to play the game. Or maybe someone gives you some Blu-ray Ultra HD 4K movies to watch on it and you wanna use the disc drive. I just, why would they go through all this trouble to make this module system for a removable disc drive? It just seems very gimmicky to me, and it seems like Sony wanted to do something big before this holiday season coming up, and they wanted something new and fresh and to get Sony and PlayStation back into people's minds because, you know, for a while there was pretty difficult to get a PlayStation until about a year ago. And I mean, that's why I waited so long to get one because it, it was hard to find, but now they're kind of everywhere. And they also just released the Deep Earth Collection, which was, you know, a few colors, some variation to the original PlayStation 5. And I think they're just taking pre-orders. I don't even think those have shipped yet. I haven't seen anyone like unboxing one. I haven't seen anyone that got like the cool blue one or anything like that yet. And also they're discontinuing the original PlayStation 5. So if you have like different plates for it and everything like that, you have, you know, some cool, uh, say the Spider-Man uh, 2 plates for it. You could have just bought the plates themselves if you wanted your PlayStation 5 to look like the Spider-Man 2 PlayStation 5. Now that's all irrelevant. So now you can't use any of the cool stuff you bought to kind of customize your PlayStation 5 because none of those parts will fit on the PlayStation 5 Slim, it, it's different. So they just released new stuff, new swag for the PlayStation 5, and then they're like, yeah, never mind, we're not gonna make it anymore. Like, what the heck, why? And a Slim model's always supposed to be cheaper. This is $50 more. I mean, every Slim model previous was cheaper because you use less materials. It's a different console. And this isn't a pro, it doesn't have more horsepower than the old one, so I don't understand this $50 increase here. If anything, it should have stayed 400. Knowing Sony and how they like to do things, I'm sure we're not that far off from a PlayStation Pro. And that's my main point here. That's why the video is called why you shouldn't buy the PlayStation 5 Slim. Because I think in about a year, if not next holiday season, the one after that, they're gonna have a pro model. I mean, everyone's been talking about it. When this was kind of just in the air, when it kind of leaked a little bit a few months back, people assumed it was gonna be a pro, pro model, not just a slim that isn't really any different. So I would wait for that. If you already have a PS5 and you're like, ah, I kinda want the slim, I, I, I don't really understand that. If you don't have a PS5 already, the original ones will probably go on sale this holiday season. You could probably get a digital version for like 350 Black Friday or something like that. This one is brand new, so it's not gonna be on sale. You're gonna pay full price for this thing when you could just get the original PlayStation 5 like right now. If you want more storage, just buy an SSD. I, that's the simple solution to this. There's not significantly more storage in this PlayStation 5 Slim, so just, I don't get it. So that's just my two cents. You don't have to listen to me, you do what you want. You're your own person. You can go buy this PS5 Slim and you know leave a mean comment down there and tell me I'm an idiot. Go ahead, do it, I don't care. You, you won't hurt my feelings. But while you're down there, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, I, this was just kind of a rant. I usually do a little bit more interesting content here on the channel, but I've been thinking about it and I've just been stewing over this. So I just thought I'd share my, share my uh, 
frustration. Also, like the video if you enjoyed it, uh, or dislike it. If you think I'm an idiot, just hit that dislike button. I like to know. I, I, I'm fine. Also, down there are some links to my social media. I have an Instagram, a TikTok, a letterbox, all, all that kind of stuff. On Instagram, I do more day-to-day -day stuff. I just kind of talk about what I'm up to, what I'm playing, things like that. So you can head down there and check all that out. I want to thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.